everybody, welcome back to my shop. So today I decided to do a little bit of mudding and taping on an unfinished wall in my garage because I wanted to try out this new Pro Stormer drywall sander. And I figured I'd do a quick review on it. If that's something you're interested in, stick around. Included in this toolkit is the sander itself, an extension rod, a dust collection hose, several sheets of sandpaper, a dust collection bag, a storage bag, a set of instructions, and a bag full of different odds and ends and hardware. To put it together, you just take the extension rod and slide it into the end of the sander. Attach the dust collection hose to the end of the extension on one end and to the filter bag or your shop vac on the other end. And you're ready to start sanding. Alright, I haven't turned this on yet, but uh, first impressions, you know, it's... It's pretty beefy. I I don't know if I can expect it to be any lighter than it is. You know, it's it's a pretty solid construction, and with that solid construction comes a little bit of weight. So I'd rather have it be a little heavier and be sturdy than have it be light and flimsy. I'm going to do a first pass on this wall with the bag with this this dust collection bag attached and we'll see how good of a job that does and then I will attach my shop vac to the end of this and see if it does any better or just kind of compare the performance okay I can flip the little power switch and it turns on the lights kind of a cool little feature I guess it lets you see where you're going in dark corners I do have variable speed here so I'll start at a relatively low speed first and then there it is. Try it out. Okay, so as you can see, it's really easy to go a little too far with the sanding, so you have to be very careful, but it does sand it very flat. It does produce a little bit more dust than I would like, especially when you're letting off the throttle and the blower stops running. So I'm going to go ahead and hook it up to my dust collector, my um, shop vac, and hopefully it'll do a better job. And just to take note, just that little bit of sanding that I did, the sanding dust did make it all the way down the handle, through that hose, and into the dust collection bag. So it does work as designed. I just think there could be a more powerful option to make it a little bit more effective. So after having used this just for a little tiny bit, let me give you some of my first impressions after use. This is a workout. Um, if you're used to holding just a small sanding sponge, there's going to be a big difference between that and lugging this guy around. It is pretty well balanced as you can see um, on the front handle. Way back here it's not, but you're only going to use the back handle if you're doing something like the ceiling or really high up on the wall. At that point you'll be underneath it and the balance won't be so much of an issue. Having said all that, even though it is really well balanced, you're still pushing up against the wall um, trying to uh, make this guy 
uh, do its work. But as you can see, it does a really quick job and I think it's best used for that first coat of mud that you put on, the really thick coat. It really tears that away really fast. I'm going to have to come back over this with a very thin coat and then I will probably still use like a sand, a wet sponge to sand that back to smooth it all out because this is really aggressive and it, I use the 120 grit paper and it comes with higher grits and so maybe that was my mistake was using a high grit because I didn't have a whole lot of material to remove and I started eating into the paper a little bit and so um, so I guess that is kind of the the uh, the cautionary tale with this this does work really fast it may work a little too fast and you're gonna have to finesse it a little bit so you don't tear into that drywall paper I'm gonna finish this wall I'm going to actually go up to a 220 or a 320 on the sandpaper because I feel like this 120 is a little too aggressive but this still beats hand sanding all of your joints hands down this is a better alternative Okay, after finishing up the whole wall, I've worked up a nice sweat. Um, it definitely was a lot faster than doing it by hand. And like I said before, it is a lot more work. I was right, and I did step it up to a 320 grit pad, and that was a lot less aggressive, and I didn't damage the uh, drywall paper anymore after I switched to the 320. So this does a pretty good job. I did notice that these, these holes here that are used for the vacuum, they do tend to clog, so you will have to occasionally uh, turn off the machine and run your dust collector or your shop vac over these holes to clear them back out. They do get packed with drywall dust. And some observations. When you get close to the baseboard or the ceiling or the walls at a 90 degree, the guard keeps it from going all the way up to the edge. They did plan for that in the design. You can actually remove the front quarter of the guard so you can get right up on the edge. And they even provide a screwdriver for you to be able to remove that guard. But I think it'd just be easier to go in and hand sand those small bits that, that uh, you can't reach with this guy. So sanding up high with this is a lot easier than sanding at waist level. And I guess because you can put it up high and let the weight of the machine do the pushing against the wall but when you have it at waist height or even lower I find myself having to push it into the wall and it just makes it that much more effort. I find myself wanting to grab the back of the sander itself while I'm at those awkward angles either low or at waist height to help put a little bit of pressure on the sander head itself and there isn't a handle here and so it makes it a little bit more difficult. I was, I was holding it by the yoke right here and that was helping me control it a little bit better in those areas where the weight of this alone is not helping me but actually working against me. So in the past when I've looked for solutions like this, really all I've met, been met with were either the small palm sanders, like a random orbit sander, and I've used that in the past and, and this, the fine dust produced by the, the drywall mud quickly ruins those sanders. And then the only other option I've ever found were the professional grade models that are worth over a thousand dollars. I would call this kind of like a, a prosumer level or like a power DIY level where you're not doing it for a business or to make money but you want something that's you know that uses your time more effectively and it's worth the investment in order to get a larger job done. All in all, I'm pretty satisfied with the way this performs. Uh, I think it's done a great job, and, and I do plan on using it for future projects. 
I've never used one of these types of sanders before, and so I don't really have anything to go off of. But let me tell you some of the things that I'm impressed with. Uh, first off is the build quality. Um, it's, it's made out of some sturdy materials, and it looks like it's really well built. And it is something that a professional can use, and you're probably going to be able to drop it a couple times without it breaking immediately. It does give you this nice light, which casts that light at a real shallow angle against the wall so you can see the smoothness of the wall and where you need to get your work done. So it's a really good, um, a really good feature for this. The dust collection on this is pretty adequate on its own, but um, adding a shop vac will obviously make it ten times better. I had a lot less dust hitting the floor with the shop vac attached than I had with, with just the bag attached. One of the biggest advantages that I almost forgot to talk about is the fact that I was able to sand this whole wall and have no residual dust left over all over the surfaces inside this garage. The only dust there is is there's just a small amount of dust at the base of the wall where it fell away from the head of the sander. But any of you that have sanded drywall in the past can attest to that you have to cover everything or it's going to get it's going to get itself covered in a nice thin layer of drywall dust. And with the vacuum attachment or even with the little blower on its own, it seems to trap most of that dust so it doesn't become a huge mess. It's a pretty versatile tool. Um, you can do the walls, obviously, as you saw me do. You can do ceilings because you have this nice extension on the end that allows you to get up high. A big thing that I like that most tools don't come with these days um, are these uh, replace the brushes are replaceable on the tools so if the brushes wear out you can replace them and this tool actually came with a set of replacement brushes so that's always nice to have so you're not trying to find replacement br brushes if this goes out um, you already have them hopefully in your bag and speaking of the bag that's a nice little added touch they provide a duffel bag to, to store all of this in I don't think I will be disassembling the whole unit to stick it in the bag, but I can still put everything in the bag and have this back handle um, sticking out of the bag, and that's good enough for me for storage. Another thing I like about this is the guard on the front. As you can see, it's a nice uh, tough plastic, but besides that, it is spring-loaded to help keep the, the uh, sanding disc flat to the surface. The suction of either the blower on the top or your added shop vac actually helps this attach to the wall and stay on the wall and then it also has these little ball bearings on here that help it glide across the wall. All of these things work together and are kind of designed to help you get the flattest surface finish possible by using this sander on your drywall tape. So what's my final verdict? If you have a lot of drywall work to do and you have a lot of joints that you need to sand, this is definitely worth the investment. It's going to take a little bit of time to figure out how to use it correctly and, and, and not damage your walls, but I can see this as being a huge time saver when you're doing um, drywall work. I just recently refinished my whole parents' basement last year, and I really wish I had something like this, but I was the guy with the sanding screens doing all whatever it was, a thousand square feet, you know, I think it was three different rooms and a stairwell, and this would have really come in handy at that time. But now that I have it, I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to attack any future drywall jobs without any problems. So I hope you liked my review of this Pro Stormer drywall sander. It's a pretty handy little tool. If you're interested in getting your, one of your own, I'll provide a link down in the description below. It's an Amazon affiliate link. Anything you purchase through that link helps me and helps this channel, and I really appreciate any help that you can provide. I want to thank you all for watching up to this point. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for future updates. Once again, my name is Tom. This is Southpaw Workshop. I'll see you guys later.